global parameters have received a few enhancements in this release. Specifically, we can now label radius and diameter dimensions using global parameters. Furthermore, when you're using equality constraints in your model, you can now use global parameters directly with the elements that are also being constrained with the equality constraints without causing errors. But just what exactly are global parameters? Well, global parameters are parameters that are applied within the project environment, but that yield similar results to the kinds of parameters we can build in the family editor. So in other words, just like in the family editor, you can create named parameters that you apply to the various parts of a family to make them flex and adjust in different ways. You can now use similar functionality in the project environment to flex different objects, different families across your entire project. So let me show you a couple of quick examples of things that we've been able to do with global parameters, not only in the current release, but in the previous release as well. And then we'll look specifically at the new features. So I have several uh, pieces of cabinetry here in this model. Now, each of the different cabinetry items is actually a different family. This is a base cabinet with drawers. This is an upper cabinet mounted to the wall. This is another upper cabinet with glass doors. Here's a corner cabinet. So each of those is a separate cabinet family. Now, if you wanted to make a modification to any one of those families and have it apply similarly to the other cabinets, you would traditionally have to go in and modify each individual uh, cabinet. Even if they were type-based parameters, it would only apply to the other cabinets within the same family. With global parameters, we can now apply the parameter across all of the families so that we can make a single change and have it apply to multiple elements. So for example, if I wanted to change the mounting height of all these upper cabinets, it's as simple as going to the Manage tab, going to the Global Parameters, and changing this global parameter that I've created and called uh, cabinet mounting height. So if I change this to say five foot six, and you can see I have a second uh, sink mounting height here for the shorter one that just uses a formula that adds one foot. So just like with parameters in the family editor, you can actually use formulas here with global parameters as well. So these two uh, parameters are tied together. When I apply that, notice that all the cabinets will move up to the new location. Okay, so another uh, set of parameters that I have applied here are these finishes. So I have a cabinet uh, material and a door material uh, for each of these cabinets. So let's say that I wanted to change all the cabinets to a different kind of material. Well, again, traditionally, I'd have to go to each family, edit the parameter, apply the new material, then move on to the next family. And if you have lots of different uh, pieces of cabinetry, that might take a while. Here, because we, they're all applied to the same global parameter, I just simply need to go into my materials here. I'll search for wood. I'll choose this birch material right here. Click OK. Apply that. And you're going to see that that change will apply to the boxes of all of the cabinets. Now, it didn't apply to the uh, fronts because that's a separate material. But all I have to do is copy and paste that material uh, to that second parameter, and it will apply to the fronts of all of those different uh, cabinets. So with global parameters, I'm able to make a change like that much more quickly and um, consider different uh, design alternatives for a variety of things. Now, the uh, materials were applied within each family type. So if you edit the type, you can see the small little equals buttons over here. And that's how I applied that global parameter, cabinet material or door and drawer front material um, to each of the individual families. So that does have to be set up the first time. But then after it's set up, you can see the benefit of how easy it is to to change out that material. As far as the heights go, I did that in uh, elevation views by just simply creating dimensions and then labeling those dimensions. So if you've ever worked in the family editor before, you know that you can create a dimension, then select it and use the label drop down here to apply a parameter to it. The exact same interface works here in the project environment now to be able to apply global parameters uh, to each of those dimensions. And that's what allowed me to be able to uh, flex the height of all those cabinets in a single modification. So now let's talk about the radius and diameter dimensions. Previously, it was not possible for you to be able to label one of those dimension types using global parameters, but now it is. So I'll go to the floor plan for this. And to help me out here, 
I created a couple reference planes to mark where the center um, of this floor feature is here and then this little curved wall. Now, the floor feature um, is a split face, and if I edit the boundary, um, you can see that it's just a simple circle, and I'll put a diameter dimension on that. I'll make sure I'm selecting the actual circle, so I'll press my tab key, and then uh, that selects the circle of the sketch and place that dimension, and now notice that when I select that dimension, I'm able to label it. Now at the moment, I don't have a parameter for that label, so I'll just click the small little icon next to it, create a parameter, and I'll just call this uh, floor pattern diameter and click OK. Now I'll finish that sketch. I've already applied um, a radius dimension here to the radius curve on this floor element directly within its sketch. So now what I want to do is just add a radius to this wall segment as well. So uh, here I'm just going to click the small little make this dimension permanent, then select that dimension, create a new uh, global parameter, and click OK. Now at this point I could flex each one of those individually, but as I mentioned a moment ago, we're actually able to put formulas on those as well. So let's say that you wanted to maintain um, some relationship between uh, these uh, elements as they flex. I'm going to type GL, which is the shortcut for global parameters, and um, looking at the parameters I have here, perhaps I want the wall radius to drive um, not only itself, but this curve over here on the floor. So I'll select wall radius, do control C to copy it to my clipboard, and then um, I'll add that to the, uh, the floor radius here with a certain amount. So I'll add maybe another four feet to that. Now I'll apply that just to make sure. So if I flex the wall radius to four feet, that will also increase the floor radius. And let's click apply to test it out. So notice that the wall uh, got a little bit larger and the curve here on the floor remains parallel because we're flexing it by a similar amount. Now I've also added these uh, linear dimensions here to keep the chairs uh, tied to the wall. Those are using another global parameter called uh, chair offset and uh, you know if I want to exaggerate that a little bit I could push the chairs uh, very far away from the wall or I could pull them in very close to the wall uh, just by flexing uh, those parameters. Now the uh, final um, uh, instance I want to look at is right here. We have these equality dimensions here and here controlling the spacing of these uh, chairs. So if I drag one of those you see that they stay equally spaced and I'll undo that. Now what I would like to be able to do instead is control that from the global parameter dialog. So I'm going to select both of these dimensions here which are only dimensioning one set of the chairs in each case, create a new parameter, call this chair spacing, and click OK. You can use this small little pencil icon here to, as a shortcut to open the global parameters dialog, and then I can flex this. I'll move it in a little bit closer, and you see the chairs will get closer together because they'll participate together with the equal equal, or I could increase the spacing and push them farther apart. And notice that in both cases, um, I'm not generating any errors. Uh, the global parameter is working together with the equality uh, to give me the end result. So global parameters give you this uh, ability to create these named constraints that you can apply across your project um, for, and, and flex them from this global control panel. And they now support um, even more functionality by being able to be labeled uh, on radius and diameter dimensions and working together with equality constraints.